Live, Local 2 at 10. Although they're surrounded by death and destruction, tonight, slowly but surely, help is arriving to the millions of survivors of the tsunami tragedy. Some of that help from right here in Houston. The incredible effort, tonight's big story. Good evening, everyone. Our big story, Houstonians opening their hearts to help those who survived the killer tsunami. All this is those who live in the area's hardest hit, live in fear of disease, starvation, and tonight, aftershocks. Here now the latest developments. There's been another major aftershock. The 5.8 magnitude earthquake rattled India's Andaman Islands. There have been no immediate reports of injuries or damage. So far, the death toll from the killer tsunami has reached 150,000. But even in the face of tragedy, there are new amazing stories of survival. An Indonesian man swept out to sea was found alive today, discovered floating 100 miles offshore. Here in Houston, the push is on to get much needed help to the area. A local doctor tonight getting ready to leave on what he hopes will be a life-saving medical mission. Local 2 reporter Ryan Korsgaard live in the Texas Medical Center tonight with Houston Relief Efforts. Ryan? And Bill, for many of us, helping means pulling out a few dollars. But for some local doctors, it means pulling out their passports. This is as close as many of us will come to the tsunami relief effort, donating a few dollars to help those in need. I'm just a heart doctor. I don't know about all these infectious diseases. But Dr. Ward Cassells is giving much more. And I'm telling you where it's going to go so that you know if you have which, a reaction to bad reaction, which one so you have okay. a reaction to. The vice president of the University of Texas Health Science Center is getting his shots before he goes around the world. The polio's on top. Right. And then you're going to get the typhoid in the bottom half of your muscle. Yeah. He and other doctors will first go to Thailand. What they've got there is really a nightmare, and we've never seen anything like it. They are going to monitor the spread of diseases, like bird flu. But if the flu jumps to humans from, a, from the um, ducks or pigeons or uh, pigs, then it typically is a very bad flu. We're not prepared for it. In that part of the world, they don't have modern medical conveniences, things like rubber gloves, not even running water and soap, things they can help stop the spread of the bird flu. So it's critical not to let the genie get out of the bottle. Because it killed more than 50 million people in the early 1900s, a Houston doctor volunteering his talents. Everybody, I think, wants to be involved. In the and what he's saying right now is probably six doctors will leave. All of this happening very quickly. They're planning to leave for Bangkok on Thursday. We're live in the medical center. I'm Ryan Korsgaard, Local 2 News. Ryan, thank you. Local 2 is giving you an opportunity to help the victims of the tsunami. We're teaming up with the Red Cross and the Houston Fire Department for an all-day telethon tomorrow to collect donations. Volunteers will be taking your calls right here from 6.30 tomorrow morning until 6.30 tomorrow evening. While most Houstonians are going to help from right here in Houston, others have chosen to head straight into the disaster zone. A Houston-based charity is now on its first mission to that area. Local 2 was invited exclusively to join Dr. K.A. Paul and his Global Peace Initiative as it delivers some much-needed supplies to the island of Sri Lanka. Local 2 reporter Cynthia Hunt with how they're reaching out to the victims there. He's been called the world's most popular evangelist. To top that off, he lives in Houston, yet you've probably never heard of him. Well, we are about to take you on a special rescue mission with a group of Americans led by Dr. K.A. Paul. We, we, we don't move without him moving. You better, you better He's a bundle of energy and enthusiasm. He is Dr. K.A. Paul, the founder of Global Peace Initiative. Our first stop will be in Hyderabad, India. Their Global Peace Initiative, or GPI, has the world's largest children's home, which is preparing for at least 2,000 new children orphaned by the tsunami. Heartbreaking. We need to take care of them immediately, and we are the only organization in the world have already facilities to take 2,000 more children as we speak. Second stop, Chennai, India, one of the nation's worst hit areas, there, the doctors and nurses volunteering on this trip will distribute medicine and treat people. There are 10 million people would die with waterborne diseases. We got to stop them from dying. Our third stop will be the most devastated area we will likely visit, Colombo, Sri Lanka. Here, the group will treat the tsunami victims who are getting ill. The owner of the Cincinnati Reds has donated the $200,000 worth of fuel to make this trip possible. He is going with us. And so is former heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield. We will take you a lot of places that introduce you to a lot of the tsunami victims and these Americans helping them. 
In Cincinnati, Cynthia Hunt, Local 2 News. Secretary of State Colin Powell and Florida Governor Jeb Bush are also seeing the destruction firsthand. They visited the ravaged Thailand coast today as they toured areas hardest hit by this tsunami. After meeting with international relief organizations, they called President Bush in Washington to give him detailed accounts. Powell says he hopes this will give the Muslim world a chance to see American generosity. Dominique, the area many say is in the most desperate need of help has been the slowest to get it. And now an incident on the local runway is making matters even worse. NBC Nightly News anchor Brian Williams in Banda Aceh tonight with details. Good evening once again from Banda Aceh in the island of Sumatra here in Indonesia, still indisputably the hardest hit region here following the tsunami nine days ago. This of course is the eve of the visit by U.S. Secretary of State Colin Powell. Notable politically because this is the world's most populous Muslim nation. Today, as you have no doubt heard by now, the incident on the runway here, an airport not used to conducting around-the-clock air operations, but they did not need this. A fully loaded cargo 737 swerving to avoid a cow, and it's not the first time that has happened at this airport. It instead dipped a wing, skinned an engine, a small fire ensued, it was extinguished, but the plane was left there crippled for some time. They lost about a half a day of relief operations at the airport before reopening late this afternoon. They are waiting to fully open the spigot of relief supplies. The Pentagon plans to use a larger cargo plane now as flights should resume at a stepped up schedule. That is the situation from here tonight where it bears repeating the death toll is one in three people in this region. For now, back to you. Look for more reports from Brian Williams from the Tsunami Disaster Zone all this week on NBC Nightly News at 5.30. And remember, Local 2 is the only Houston television station with a local group bringing aid to the region. Look for Cynthia Hunt's reports from South Asia all this week.